In this video, we're going to be taking a look at using the X-Tool F1 Ultra to engrave some materials commonly used in the knife making community. And that's mainly going to be stainless steel and carbon steel. Now, in a previous video, we looked at engraving some military tags as well as pendants. Most of those were made of stainless steel. Now, some of them were polished, other ones were plated. But the idea here is that not all stainless steel is created equal. There are many different grades available, and we're going to find out if some of those grades respond differently to engraving. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not experienced in the art of knife making. This video was actually a request from a viewer named Mike who suggested the material types to use and actually very generously sent me samples of those materials to use in this video. I leaned on Mike for his expertise in knife making on this material selection. So big shout out to Mike. If you guys want to support him, I'll put some links in the video description down below to find him and support his work. So ultimately what I have are two types of stainless steel, one type of carbon steel, and I went out and got some of these very inexpensive stainless steel steak knives that we're just gonna dive into, run some tests using both the blue laser and the IR laser and see what happens. And finally, before we get started, I would just like to reiterate that I am not an authority on knife making or knife engraving. I just haven't seen a lot of these videos on YouTube specifically using the X-Tool F1 Ultra. So I'd like to think of this video as an initial test or experiment to encourage some discussion in the comment section down below about the material selection, the process, and whether or not the results are going to hold up to real world use in the long run. So with that being said, let's get started. The first material sample we have here is AEBL, and it's a type of stainless steel commonly used on razor blades, at least from what I can find online. Now in a previous video, I showed the process of creating these material test arrays. X-Tool Creative Space makes it very easy to do these and I'm obviously zooming through this right now, but if you're looking for the step-by-step -step version on how to do these, you'll have to watch my previous video about engraving. But right now, what I have here are two test arrays, one for the blue light laser and the other for the IR laser. You can see from the camera preview from the F1 Ultra that I've got them overlaid on top of our material sample piece. They're both a 10 by 10 matrix with the blue light laser ranging from 10 to 100% power and speed from 50 to 200 millimeters per second. And on the IR laser, it's the same 10 by 10 with a power from 10 to 100% and speed from 250 to 2500 millimeters per second. We'll run the blue light laser test first. So I'll just go through the object list and make sure everything else is disabled. And then we can go ahead and process the blue light test array. Based on my previous experience with the blue light laser and stainless steel materials, I would suspect that we're going to get some type of array of colors. The various speeds and power settings will result in different temperature conditions at the surface of the stainless steel, and we'll get those different colors as a result. We'll have a closer look at those results in a moment, but for now we'll leave the material in the machine, we'll disable the blue light test array, and we'll enable the IR test array. With the IR laser, it is possible to achieve colors on stainless steel, but I just have not been able to get them personally. There are a lot of variables at play, but the thing that I can consistently do with the IR laser with steel and stainless steel are get these shades or tones of silver, gold, and brown. Here's a closer look at the initial results right on the machine. Later in the video, we'll look at all of these pieces under some better lighting conditions, and we'll drill down a little further into the settings for the blue light laser to get even more colors. But for now that looks pretty good and all these small details of the lettering showed up so now we'll move on to this other type of stainless steel 14c28n and from my research online it looks like it would be a good choice for hunting knives as well as chef's knives first i'll run it through the exact same blue light test array as the aebl stainless steel then i'll subject it to the ir test array again with the exact same settings from the aebl stainless steel while peering through the protective cover of the X-Tool F1 Ultra, the results look pretty similar to the AEBL stainless steel, and upon a closer inspection, I would say that they're almost indistinguishable from one another. Now the blue light laser on this type of stainless steel seems to produce more uniform colors. On the AEBL stainless, the colors looked a little bit splotchy, but there are so many variables at play here, including the grain of the material. So next we're going to try some 1095 high carbon steel. Now this is not stainless steel, but I'm going to be using the exact same material test arrays and that's to see what will happen here with the same settings. And right away I can see that the high carbon steel is not producing the same vibrant colors 
with the blue laser as the stainless steel. However, the results with the IR laser are looking pretty consistent across the carbon steel right through the stainless steel. After removing the material from the machine, it validates what I just said, but also when you take a look at the blue laser results, even though the colors aren't as vibrant, they actually look very uniform, and that's a good thing if you're going to produce graphics on top of this high carbon steel. Now before we move on, I just want to remind you guys that on my website EmbraceMaking.com I've got lots of upgrades and accessories available for various X-Tool machines, including the F1 Ultra. We're not going to be using any fixtures in this video, however I designed this fixture adapter to adapt the various fixtures from the regular X-Tool F1 to the F1 Ultra. If you've got an X-Tool machine, go check that stuff out if you'd like to support my channel. With that out of the way, we're going to switch back to the AEBL stainless steel and we're going to perform a few more tests. Now in a previous video, you can see on one of those fixtures that I just talked about, I used the IR laser to produce this logo on a polished stainless steel tag. If you have a grayscale graphic, the various tones of gold, silver, and brown can produce a very striking result on stainless steel. Now the tag in that video was polished. and In this case, our surface is not, but I'm going to go ahead and use the exact same settings. The results from the IR laser look pretty consistent across the two various types of stainless steel and the high carbon steel that we've already tested. And so I anticipate here that we're going to get a pretty decent result. And after pulling it out of the machine, I'm very happy with the result. Although I will be honest, it's a little less interesting to look at when it's not against a polished surface, but overall it's still very nice. And you can imagine if you had your own logo that you were trying to engrave on your knife, I think it would be pretty eye catching for your customers. What if you wanna just put some text on there? Let's say just your company name or something. Well, you can create some text in Xtool Creative Space and I've set the IR laser to 100% power and 250 millimeters per second, which was the highest power setting and the lowest speed in that material test array for the IR laser. And you get some very crisp looking text. And as you can see, one of the other things that I did when I removed the material test piece from the machine is that I cleaned some of the residue off of the engraving with some isopropyl alcohol. Next, I ran another material test array with the blue light laser, ranging from 50 to 80% power and from 50 to 200 millimeters per second. I determined this tighter range of settings from the original larger range of blue laser settings on this piece of material that we did a few moments ago. Now I've imported this military tag shape design with a bunch of cats on it, and each of those cats are made up of their own individual shapes. And using that nice spectrum of colors from the tighter range of blue light laser settings, applying these specific settings to the various cat shapes on the different layers in Xtool Creative Space, and I've left the outline or the black layer to continue using the fiber IR laser. So you can see in one job, you can utilize both lasers for maximum flexibility, and I was hoping to achieve a nice multicolored result with this cat design. But right away, I noticed that the result was not as multicolored as I had hoped, the colors weren't exactly matching those of the material test array. And I brought this up in my previous video when I was engraving military tags, pendants, and dog tags. Achieving consistency with the blue light laser is actually quite difficult. The blue light laser is generating heat that's going to discolor the material near the surface, and it seems like there are a lot of different factors that can affect how that heat translates into those different colors. I could put another piece of AEBL stainless steel right beside this one and run the exact same project and end up with some different results. And that doesn't mean the results are any less interesting or impressive, but it's just something to take into consideration. I will switch over to the 1095 high carbon steel. And again, this is not a stainless steel. And because we're not going to get very vibrant colors from the blue laser, I'm going to import this grayscale image here of a koi fish. And we're going to focus much more on the IR laser on this high carbon steel. So I'll select everything from that cat design and I'll disable the output. And then I'll make sure I have the right settings for the koi fish design. And this is again, the exact same settings that I've used in that previous video where I was doing these military shaped tags. Now in that other video, this design was performed on a plated and polished tag, but surprisingly the results are pretty similar. The IR laser results in this semi-gloss finish that looks very attractive and there's excellent consistency and control converting the white, black, and gray shades from the graphic into silver, gold, and brown shades on the material. In that previous engraving video, another graphic that I produced on one of those polished tags was this dragon. This one was done as a two-step process and I'm going to do the exact same thing on this high carbon steel. In that other video, I get into a lot more details about this process, but essentially the first pass of the graphic had the contrast slightly increased, but a lot of the mid-tones of gray are still in it. 
But when making the adjustments to those image, one of the things I tried to do was maintain some white space in the scales of the dragon. And that was to ensure those areas don't get engraved. And when that first pass was done, I left the material inside of the Xtool F1 Ultra, did not touch it, do not disturb it, and I've copied the graphic and I'm gonna make some further adjustments to the copy. This one essentially has even more contrast applied, so you're only seeing the darkest sections of this graphic. And I'm gonna set it to the exact same coordinates as the first graphic. The two are now perfectly overlaid from one another. I'm gonna change the settings to something similar to the first graphic, but you'll see it will have a higher power range and that should give us some darker results in the sections that are very black. This should result in an engraving that's going to look a little more dynamic because of that increased contrast. When this was done on a polished plated tag, the dragon scales that were not processed by the laser remained looking polished and bright. Now in this case on the bare metal, you can see that those dragon scales also were not engraved and despite the material not being plated, it still makes the graphic really pop. It's nice to see on these knife making materials and you could certainly produce some very attractive results on your pieces. And one final thing to note is that depending on the temperature of light that you're looking at these engravings under, the result can look drastically different, which in my opinion makes it even more striking. Now unfortunately, I don't have a collection of those knives in the materials we just tested, so I went out and bought some of these rather inexpensive 420J1 stainless steel knives for us to play around with. During the engraving process, I'm likely going to overshoot the edge of the knife, so I've put down this sacrificial aluminum plate on top of the work surface so I don't mark up my Xtool F1 Ultra. And when the knife is placed on the handle, you'll notice that it tends to tip over. So I've added a piece of steel to counterbalance that so the blade is parallel with the work surface. Now we'll jump into Xtool Creative Space and I'll import an AI generated image of this howling wolf. For now, we'll set aside the easy set panel and we'll focus on placing the graphic on top of the knife blade. You'll eventually see that a good portion of the bottom of this image is going to get cut off and cropped, but for now I'm going to reflect the image horizontally. I want the face of the wolf pointing towards the pointy edge of the blade. Then I'll crop off some of the bottom of this image, and then I'm going to focus on making some adjustments. So I'm going to increase the contrast as well as clip some of the grayscale information. I don't want too many mid-tones of gray, I want this to be a pretty punchy looking, almost black and white with a little bit of gray image. Then I can further edit the image, use the magic wand to erase some of the white background. And this is going to make it even easier for me to determine exactly where this wolf is placed on top of the blade. You'll see that the graphic extends a little bit below the bottom edge of the blade and that's okay. And then I can go into the easy set panel and I'm going to select the same fiber IR presets that we looked at earlier in this video. I'll send this design off to the Xtool F1 Ultra and we'll see how it turns out. Based on previous results from other stainless steels earlier in this video, I doubt that the 4020 series is going to look any different since all of the results with the IR laser were very consistent. After finishing this job, as I had suspected, things are looking to be pretty on par with the other results earlier in this video. After cleaning the design with some isopropyl alcohol, it looks even cleaner and sharper, and you can see more detail. Now, although this looks very nice, my concern is that in the long run, this will lead to the blade starting to rust. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Now, one good thing though is with this IR laser, it doesn't pump enough heat into the material to warp the blade. Typically, I find this is more of a problem with the blue laser. We'll try that in a few moments. But for now, we'll repeat this exact same process with the same process settings, just with different graphics to give you a better idea of what this looks like using these different images. And so we'll speed through this process rather quickly because again, everything is exactly the same as the wolf example that we just looked at. In this example here, it's even more clear that while the job is running, there is some material being removed. Although that I would imagine the composition of the stainless steel is homogenous through the blade, I do question whether or not the fiber laser has some impact on that composition at the newly developed surface. It seems plausible that I'm just turning these knives into some sort of impractical novelty item without introducing a secondary process like passivation to bring back the stainless properties at the surface. If you guys have experience with this, I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments section down below. 
I engraved one more knife for good measure, this time with a bear design. Now, you can see that I'm skipping through this process rather quickly because it is the exact same process as the previous designs. If you're skipping through this video, you can go back a few minutes and find the details on this process in the previous examples. So for this one here with the bear, again, I'll be cleaning it up with isopropyl alcohol and the result looks fantastic. This design here has a really nice balance between all the different tones of brown, gold, and silver, plus some of the steel that was not lasered, and it really makes that fur stand out. Now that we've done a few examples with the IR laser, I'm gonna go ahead and do an example with the blue laser. So I've got this American flag design, and we're going to be processing the different colors of the flag with different settings. So the blue part of the flag with the stars, I'm gonna have these settings at 50% power and 50% speed, and that should result in a blue color based on our previous material tests. And the red stripes, we've got 50% power and 83 millimeters per second, and that should get us something close to red. I'm gonna position the flag over the blade, and then I'm just gonna use some of the basic shapes, and I'm going to place that over portions of the flag and subtract that. This will ensure that the wooden handle does not get hit with the laser with these settings. And since this is a vector file and each of those red stripes is their own individual shapes, I can just select those individually and delete them. Now I have the relevant portion of the flag on top of the blade and I can slightly reposition that and then go ahead and process it. And because the blue laser operates quite a bit slower than the IR laser, this job on a single side of the blade took about 22 minutes to finish. And the other thing to watch out for that I pointed out in the previous engraving video is that the blue laser generates a lot more heat on the steel, so you might want to be careful about warping the blade. And also be careful when you pick up the workpiece after it's been engraved, you could burn yourself. The final result was, quite honestly, a lot better than I thought it would be. I've had some trouble in the past with the uniformity of the colors when using the blue laser on steel and stainless steel. The only area where the color started to shift a little bit was at the edge of the blade where it starts to taper downwards. And that's to be expected as the surface is falling away from the laser and becoming out of focus. In this video, we've mainly focused on marking the metal parts of these knives, but of course knives do have handles. And in this case, we've got wood handles on these steak knives. And I just wanna quickly show you here that in Xtool Creative Space, you can use the text tool to easily make some text. You can type out your company name or you could even import an image with your company logo. There's a variety of built-in fonts inside of Xtool Creative Space, but you can also select fonts that are system fonts or custom fonts that you've installed on your computer. And when I'm finished with the font or logo design, in the top right hand corner, I can select the material. Now in this case, I have no idea what type of wood this is on these handles. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I just bought these inexpensive knives as a demo for this video. So in the Easy Set Material Library, I'll just select wood as one of the filters and I'll scroll through and try and find something that looks like it could be the same. There are some reddish, orangish tones in the wood, so I'm gonna go ahead and try cherry wood, plywood, three millimeters thick, and it has an engraving setting for the blue laser light. And I'll just click on the Open in XCS button and import those default settings. Now when I click on the text, you can see that the text has inherited those settings. Next, I wanna make sure that the placement of the text looks correct. So we're gonna use the framing tool for this. And if you click on the three lines beside the framing tool, you can choose how the framing is displayed. In this case, the outline, you can kind of see there the projection of the text itself. And if you choose a rectangle, you'll find that the framing is just a bounding box around the entire graphic. And in this case, it's that text. The blue laser at a very, very low power setting is what's used for the framing. So you can safely reach in there with your fingers and adjust the position of the knife to get the graphic exactly where you want it. Then using the up and down buttons on the front of the F1 Ultra controller, I can make final adjustments to the focus and send the job off to the laser for processing. Whenever you're processing wood with the blue laser, it tends to generate a lot of smoke, so be sure you have a good smoke and fume filtration system in place. If you guys are looking for smoke and fume accessories and upgrades for the X-Tool F1 Ultra, I've got a lot of those on my website as well. Looking at the text, the settings for the cherry wood turned out looking pretty good. The text is dark enough black that you can very clearly see the lettering. 
Earlier in the video, I mentioned that we'll take a look at some of the engraving under better lighting conditions. And so we're at that point now. So first off, we've got the AEBL stainless steel. And hopefully under this light, you can more clearly see the various colors that I initially got with my first material test array settings with the blue light laser, as well as the initial test settings with the infrared laser. On the backside, you can see a much more vibrant and complete spectrum of colors when I narrowed down the power and speed settings from that original material test array. Using the settings from that material test array, you can better see the colors I was able to achieve in the cat design. Some colors show up better than others, and I can't guarantee in your case, you're going to get the exact same results. You'll definitely have to experiment a lot with the blue laser to get consistency. Looking at the logo that was processed with the IR laser, you'll find that you'll get a lot more consistency across the different materials. As you can see here, even with the 14C28N stainless steel, the IR laser results are almost identical to the AEBL, whereas the blue laser results are pretty close, but still a little bit different. On the back side of this material sample, again, you'll find another material test array here with the broader spectrum of colors. And again, that's a result of using a narrower range of settings. And then beside that, we've got the koi fish that was done with the IR laser. I shared those settings earlier in the video and the result was a very nice satin looking finish that looks very 3D and almost holographic in a way. Next to that is the cat design that was done with the blue laser. And one thing to take note of here, it doesn't matter if you're looking at the results of the blue laser or the IR laser, depending on the temperature of light, if it's warm or cool, the results can look very different. And the last sample plate here is the 1095 high carbon steel. So this is not a stainless steel. And you can see that the material test array for the blue laser, I tried to run two of them there. That's kind of why they're smashed together, uh, is not quite as vibrant as it is with the stainless steel. Even under this light, you can see that the colors are very muted. Whereas with the IR laser, it's still consistent between stainless and not stainless steel. So in my opinion, the takeaway there is that if you're using the blue light laser on something that's not stainless steel, don't expect very vibrant results. And because that was my experience, I processed two other graphics on this piece here, both with the IR laser instead of doing one with the blue laser in two different methods. The koi fish has the more satin finish uniform look to it, whereas the dragon has a high contrast look. And I shared the settings to both of those designs earlier in this video. Now we'll have a look at the test knives and unfortunately the first thing I noticed is all of these scuffs and scratches on these off the shelf inexpensive knives. Putting that aside, you can see the incredible level of detail that you can achieve engraving with the X-Tool F1 Ultra and that IR laser, even towards the cutting edge of the blade where the blade starts to taper off and this would have an impact on the focal distance of the laser. The IR fiber laser seems to be a little less sensitive to this than the blue laser if you recall from earlier in the video when we did that American flag design and the colors started to shift a little at the cutting tapered edge of the blade. Now, although these designs look nice, I'll reiterate some of my thoughts from earlier in the video in case you missed that, where I still question how this will impact the longevity of the blade. Will they rust faster? Should they go through some sort of secondary process like passivation? Or maybe that process would ruin the engraving, I'm not sure. I also recently read about laser annealing with fiber lasers where no material is actually removed and just the material near the surface is heated enough that it blackens. But at this point, I'm not sure if the X-Tool F1 Ultra is capable of that. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys found some value in these tests. I would love to hear your ideas and thoughts in the comment section down below and whether or not you think the engraving on these knives would hold up to long-term use and abuse. And as always, in the comment section down below, I would love to hear if you have any more video ideas or tests that you'd like to see. I'm always open to new ideas and I'd love to help out where I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss my next video. Very shortly, we're gonna be looking at the X-Tool F1 Ultra and the RA2 Rotary Module. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that one. And if you guys are looking for other ways to support me and my work, check out my website, embracemaking.com, where you'll find tons of upgrades and accessories for the X-Tool F1 Ultra, as well as a huge variety of other machines.